Good afternoon. It is the first Wednesday in March. March 2, it is Ash Wednesday. It's also the beginning of that Christian season period time called Lent. You know that 40 day journey that begins on Ash Wednesday and culminates with Easter Sunday. It is in that period that we learn to have you know, Jesus' triumphant ride into Jerusalem and his last supper with the disciples and the crucifixion, and then the resurrection um, on Easter Sunday. But it's an, it's an opportunity for us in new thought uh, Christian tradition to practice and activate our consciousness building tools of an, denials and affirmations. And so, I'm so excited for this 40-day period, which begins today. And I'm inviting each of you, wherever you are in the world, it's a holiday I know in Jamaica, but not everywhere it is. I'm inviting each of you to join me on this 40-day journey. Join us on this 40-day journey. Join UC Truth or your own ministry, but make it a personal 40-day journey. It's just a deliberate decision that for these 40 days, I'm going to work this thing. And you know, 40 represents an indefinite but complete period of time. And so, if you're consistently working something for 40 days, you know there must be some kind of demonstration at the end of it. Or writer, for the daily inspiration which we use for our noonday inspirations, is talking about leveling up Lent. You know, this month we're focusing on our spiritual faculty of strength. All of us, all of us at some point in time have to call for its strength in some situations. And there's a physical location in our body and that is our lower back. And the disciple Andrew is the disciple that is associated with this faculty of strength that we each have so especially for those of you for those of us from time to time who may have any kind of lower back pain we know that is our strength center and we can become still and call for its strength in whatever area of our lives that it seems to not be active so Again, I'm inviting each of you to take this 40 day as a period where we consciously focus our attention on something. Usually Lent is a time when you focus on giving up something and that's good, it's a good if that is your choice. But um, we use an acronym which we all know and we hear of every year from time to time. Let's embrace negative thinking, which is the acronym for Lent. Let's eliminate negative thinking, sorry, and then let's embrace new thoughts. And so for this particular writing, the writer is focusing on what new attributes will you focus on for this 40-day period. Choose one thing. And again, we're always linking back to that thing that we wrote on our list for January that we want to accomplish for the year 2022. And what is that one attribute or quality or gift or, or, or skill or faculty that we can focus our attention on for this 40-day period and just begin to ask the Holy Spirit, our inner guidance, to reveal to us what does this look like for me in life now? And maybe you can find an area in life that you have been working through for a little while and it don't seem like something turning in that area. You know, it, it keeps coming up. Something keeps coming up for you. And maybe it's a call in that area to release the kind of old thoughts that you may have had about the situation and embrace new thoughts. The writer says, today marks the beginning of Lent. During this season, many people get excited and challenge themselves to give up something they love or enjoy for 40 days and to control their worldly desires. 
If you truly desire to experience spiritual value in heart and mind, then challenge yourself to level up your Lenten practice by sustaining a spiritual discipline of prayer for the next 40 days that will establish true communion with God. The aim during this period is to blend and merge your mind with God mind so that you can live a better God inspired life. This is your time, your time to fast from the thoughts that no longer serve your highest good. Fast from criticisms and limitations that have kept you in bondage. Instead, it's the time to feast on the truth of God's unlimited ideas that seek expression through you. Feast on the abundance of God, the goodness of God, the health and joy of God. Feast on the nature of God that is always absolute good and always available. Level up Lent affirming the Christ presence everywhere. So our writer is inviting us during this period to feast on some things, to feast on some things. I love the concept of feasting because usually we're thinking of giving up something. So we are giving up meat or we're giving up this or we're giving up that and that's good. There's nothing wrong with that. But I love the, the concept to focus on what will I give my attention to for these 40 days. Something intentional and deliberate that I will give my attention to. And she's recommending, they're recommending that for the month of March that we step up our prayer life. What do I mean step up our prayer life? Means that you must spend more time aligning your thoughts with God's thoughts. Spend more time coming into a common union, a common understanding, a common belief system with that which is pure, that which is life, that which is love, that which is wisdom, that which is substance, that which is power. And we know the benefits of if what you focus on, what you think about, you bring about. So if you're focusing your attention and energy on God mind and aligning your thoughts with God's thoughts, then you can already see the difference that this will make in your life. It will make in my life. So how can that 40 day prayer life look like for you? What can it look like? Because maybe you already have a prayer routine. Maybe it is that you're already praying. I mean, at UC Truth, we're just in a prayer series. We have been in one since the start of January where we've been talking about prayer and the beautiful effects of prayer. So even this 40-day journey is nothing new for us, and it's a continuation of something that we have been doing, and we've been using the prayer of faith. Now, if you have consistently been doing that, then you ought to have been seeing some shifts in your life. And it's interesting that when you start to work on different aspects, things come up, things that are unlike what you uh, want to achieve and experience come up. And they come up not to throw you off track, but they come up so that you can deny any real power or truth to them and continue to feast on the goodness of God. That's why we must keep our eyes singular. That's why the commandment says, I am the Lord thy God, have no other gods before me. It never only meant um, no man that you worship or person that you worship but it also meant no other thoughts but think on my thoughts it also meant no other feelings but focus on the feelings that are in alignment with who I am who God is it means no words but the words that edify and glorify God it means no actions but the actions that are in alignment with truth no reactions but the reactions that are from a place of principle of God principle so this alignment is key. It's key for us experiencing our resurrection on Easter Sunday. Because remember, you know, this 40-day journey is just like how Jesus went off um, into the wilderness for 40 days. 
because Jesus had to deal with Jesus' stuff, all the stuff that was coming up. He had to deal with that. So Jesus had to take away himself for 40 days. And despite all the temptations that were coming his way, Jesus had to choose where he was going to give his attention, who he was going to focus on, what was going to be his dominant thing. And so this 40-day period of Lent is for you and I to choose what will have our attention. What will have our attention? What will have your attention for the next 40 days? The writer suggests to feast on the truth of God's unlimited ideas. Remember, everything that you could ever want, every good thing that you could ever seek, exists and came from an idea in divine mind. So instead of asking for things or expecting things, listen for the idea. Because in the idea is wrapped up all that you need to bring whatever you have to bring to manifestation. So at the beginning of January, you wrote down on your paper that for this year I want to experience this, for this year I want to experience that, whatever it is. Now your prayer must be, okay God, what is the divine idea that I must get for this thing to be made manifest in through and as me? And that could be your 40 day journey. It could be you listening to see what, how must I be guided during these 40 days. And like I said before, when you start to work on these things, things will come up. Things are going to come up because all that is unlike where you're going and what you're wanting and who you're being will have to fade away from you. Things that are there, you never know what they are, will come up so that they can fade away. Don't get distracted. Stay focused. And that's why this song says, you're all I want, you're all I ever needed. And help to remind me, God, in all of those moments that you are here, that you are never absent, that there's no place that I could go that you are not. Help me to stay focused. Come on. Draw me close to you. Never let me go. Never let me go. I lay it all down again. To hear you say, to hear you say that I'm your friend. You are my desire. You are my desire. One else will do Cause nothing else can take your place To feel the warmth of your embrace Help me find my way for more of God remember if God is all that exists then what are you desiring but more expressions of God more expressions of the life of God and life in terms of its health and how that health shows up in our bodies how that health shows up in our pocketbooks our finances how it shows how health shows up in our relationships in our business in our everything 
So even when you are seeking, if you are having a health challenge, what you're really seeking is more of God because you're seeking more of life. And God is life. So you're really seeking more of God. So when you say you're all I want, you're really saying all of what God is, I want to experience and express. God is love. So you are love. So when you're saying you're all I want, you're also saying all the love and how it expresses in relationships, be it intimate, friendship, family, business. You're wanting to experience and express that harmonizing love, that attracting love. God is wisdom. Everything, every knowledge, every piece of information that you could ever need exists in the mind of God. God is all the wisdom there is. God is omniscient. And so every desire for wisdom, every study that you're doing is a desire for more of God. More of that wisdom expressing as you. Through you. In you. God is substance. Everything that exists, everything that we could ever see, smell, touch, taste, hear, comes out, is pressed out of the substance of God. Just like dough. So when you're wanting something, when you're wanting the car, the house, the this, the that, the that, the that, the that, you're wanting a more expressions of God. God is power. Master, authority, and, 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 and dominion. So when there's a sense of weakness, when there's a sense of I can't do it, when there's a sense of something else is there that is more powerful, you're wanting a great expression of that power as God. And that's why Matthew tells us, seek ye first the kingdom and everything else will be added. In other words, put your attention, don't just go for the low hanging fruits to get the this and the that and the that. You want to get that ultimate thing so that at any point in time when you, when you want to access these smaller things you can tap into that higher thing that is has these smaller things as expressions we have a saying that say you know don't give a man a fish you're teaching the fish he can fish for himself all the time eat when he wants to eat whatever it's the same thing seek ye first the kingdom if you seek for God if you seek if your desire is to express God and God is life and God is love and God is wisdom and God is substance and God is power and God is all the power there is all the wisdom there is all the knowledge there is then if, if you are tapping into that presence then it means everything is available to you my job and your job as we are being told in this writing is to align our thinking and our beliefs with that of God. And stop thinking that is we big and bad doing it by ourselves. Stop, stop thinking that, you know, oh, you know, I'm so mighty, this is all me. No, but by the grace of God. But by the grace of God are we here. But by the grace of God have we gone through. But by the grace of God we woke up this morning. And but by the grace of God, will we go to bed tonight? And that's why it's important that during this 40-day journey, like Jesus, because Jesus gave us plenty of examples, you know. Remember, in these 40 days is when Jesus had his greatest temptations. Now, let's be practical and real. Let's put ourselves in Jesus' position. Well, First of all, I don't know I could have got you all of that kind of drama. I, you know, probably by now, me I say, God, enough. You know, like sometimes I'm at the gym working out and something get too heavy and I say, enough. I tell the trainer, enough. Time to stop now. Right? In the same way, Jesus had to withstand all that was going on. And in all of it, Jesus did not waver. Jesus did not waver in all of it. Jesus kept true to his mission and kept focus on God and relying on God and it was not God outside of himself Jesus kept saying the Father and I are one and Jesus told us the things that I have done you too can do and greater so then we need to tap into our own God self we need to tap into our own inner strength we need to tap into our own inner power and stop feeling like we are nothing. We are, we are, you know. We need to remember who we are. We need to go back 
to the beginning. Go back to Genesis and remember Genesis 26, 27, 28, Genesis 1, 26, 27. We are made in the image and the likeness of God. Which means all the qualities and attributes that God is, is wrapped up inside of us. And that is why again, during this 40 day, we align ourselves to our God mind. We don't conform to this world, but we be transformed through the renewing of our minds. We use our powerful tools of denials to release anything from us that does not look like the power and presence of God that is not pure and honorable and just and true like Philippians tells us and instead we lift up our eyes to the hills we lift up our consciousness our thoughts to the higher thoughts to the God thoughts so that our experience can reflect that that's why the song says draw me close to you Because you're all I want. You're all I ever need. Help me know you are near. Help me to remember in those moments when I may forget that I am never outside of the power and presence of God. Where can I go from your presence? Where can I flee from your spirit? <clears throat> if I go to heavens, you're there. If I make my bed in hell or in Sheol, you're there. You're all I want. Come on. What is your practice for this Lenten period? What are you going to commit to on a daily basis for the 40 days that you can remind yourself that you're never outside of the power and presence of God. It may be a song, like the one they just sang, that you commit to listening to it over and over and over again. And whenever those moments come, when you feel less than, you go back and just start to remember who you are and who God is. It may be that you use the daily inspiration for better living and remind yourself with the writings each day or it may be another publication. It may be a Bible verse. It may be a lesson sermon. But something that can remind you every single day that I'm on a journey for 40 days. It may be a meditation that you spend some time each day just before bed, releasing all that doesn't serve you and is unlike the power and presence of God and affirming the truth of who you are. It may be a simple sentence as, God is with me. God leads me. God's, God guides me. It may be God's got it. It may be I am healed. It may be God is my supply. This does not have to be difficult and it should not be a chore. You know, sometimes you're saying, Lord, have mercy. Do I have to do this again? But remember, habits are formed by just repeating the same behavior. And you already naturally have certain habits, you know. We already naturally have certain habits. 
And some of those habits that we have don't necessarily serve us. That is why Lent is an intentional 40-day period where you decide what the habit is. Because the habit that you've chosen is going to determine the result that you get on Easter Sunday. If, like Jesus, you can rise out of your own limiting circumstance, whatever it is, whatever it was, Jesus rose out of his limiting circumstances, which was represented by the crucifixion and the tomb. All of us have our own tomb. It may be the tomb of finances and debt and lack. It may be the tomb of some health or some health challenge. It may be the tomb of unworthiness. It may be the tomb of unforgiveness. It may be the tomb of lack and limitation. It may be the tomb of anger and guilt and frustration. And all of us can rise like Jesus on Easter Sunday. So we're not just singing hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus rise, Jesus rise. But how have you risen? That's what Jesus said. The things that I have done, you can do and greater. Where are the greater things? Jesus is our way sure and this is our time now to live like Jesus did. It is our time now to practice what Jesus taught. Like, you can you imagine going to school and we just go to school every day and we hear what the teacher says but we just clap the teacher and say you're beautiful, you did a beautiful lesson you taught, and it just never ever meant anything to us and we never practiced it what would be the point? what would be the point if you are not going to transfer that knowledge and use it in your life, world and affairs it's the same thing Lent gives us that opportunity so like the acronym says Let's eliminate negative thinking. Don't beat up on yourself, just eliminate it. When the thoughts come that don't serve you, that's when you must be saying, get thee behind me, Satan. And in the same breath, you replace that with a new thought. Let's embrace new thoughts. Let. And find something that works for you. Music works for me. And so I find a song and I listen to the song over and over and over again in my car. Wake up to it in the morning and I'm showering. Just, you just allow yourself to be saturated with that music and let it feed your soul. Maybe you find a book, one of the writings by someone who inspires you. And for 40 days, you take a page each day and you allow the words of that book to just saturate your soul and keep you in alignment with the truth of who you are. And if you can't do it by yourself, find yourself an accountability partner, somebody who can check in with you, somebody you can take the journey with together, because you don't have to do it alone. Maybe before you go to your bed in the night, you spend five minutes and just give thanks for the day and release all of the baggage and the garbage and this and that and whatever happened and just say, okay, God, I'm now open. Show me what I am to do. This is the beauty of this message. And we are so grateful. We are told in Matthew 6, 18, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. This work is your soul work. I can't do it for you. I can only do it for me. Each of us must do it if we want the results we say we want. Or we can continue talking and singing and praising. But faith without works is dead. And your work is to go through this 40-day process where you, you spend time building your consciousness, building your awareness to experience a resurrection. It's up to you. And so in this moment, as you remember that God is all that we want, God is all that we could ever need, we remember that God's light is always surrounding us. 
illuminating our path and creating ways that we can see clearly the steps to take. God's love is always enfolding us. He's always harmonizing those situations that need to be harmonized. He's always joined to us the good that is ours. God's power is always protecting us. We are always under divine protection. God's wisdom is always guiding us and leading us. That we know the right thing to do, we know the right thing to say. Wherever we are, we remember God is, and all is well. Thank you, God, that this is so, and so it is. Thank you to each of you for your continued support and your continued love. Enjoy the rest of your Ash Wednesday. Send some love to somebody somewhere. Share this inspiration with somebody that they too can start the journey for their life to be different. Remember, your life remains the same unless you do something differently. Peace.